praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I wanted to talk to you today about something that's been on my mind. I've talked about this a few times before, but here in the last moments of the last seconds, of the last hours, of the last days, I keep hearing this from people who it always seems to be associated with these works righteous heretics for some strange reason. But I wanted to talk about how the Bible is clear that the only people that are going to be left behind at the time or the moment of the rapture are the unbelievers, people who are not saved. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And we're going to start at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, Even so, them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Did you see it, beloved? As I read it, did you see it? Did you see the only qualifier necessary to go in the rapture? I hope you did, because guess what? It's the same qualifier that's needed to be saved. Let's back up, shall we? to verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. You know, I hear person after person say, if you haven't truly repented of all your sins, you're probably not going to go in the rapture. Hmm. The devil is a liar. Because that's not what this scripture says. The qualifier is if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Read it and weep, all you works righteous heretics. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, It's the word of the Lord, y'all, and he'll never lead us wrong. So the next time somebody tries to tell you that they have to truly repent of all their sin to go in the rapture, you can go, uh, uh, uh. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says different. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Because he would not have us to be ignorant of the devil's lies. So take a moment and share this with your family and friends and believing relatives. And even the unbelievers out there. And give them a warning. One more dire warning. We don't know how much more time we have. Temporary earthlings. 
But I'm thinking, not long, as I'm looking at these signs, I'm listening for sounds. How about you? We can rejoice and we can do exactly what verse 18 says. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Know when not to be troubled, when not to be soon shaken in mind, when not to sorrow as those that have no hope. That's all right here in the passage. I hope that's a blessing to you, this glorious day of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. For your love, for your mercy, for your grace, for your provision, for your peace, for health, prosperity. Thank you, Lord. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Every second of every hour of every day. Thank you, Jesus.